Hello folks, this episode may contain adult themes and swear words, mainly because I can't be asked to edit them out anymore. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to our Lion Special podcast. Yes, we couldn't do it, we could not take the summer off. Uh, and let the Lions tour go by without reporting on it. Hopefully, Ollie and I will be together to give a weekly review of the games that have taken place. We also might be doing some um, ride-along, watch-along games, um, potentially more for the midweek games um, than the weekend ones, um, but that is something that we're considering doing as well. What is going to be on these episodes? Primarily, it is obviously going to be about the Lions, 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 but we will also be checking in on the other international games. So, for example, this weekend, Japan had a cracking game against Ireland. England took on the US of A. And unfortunately, Tonga took on New Zealand. That's a whole different subject in itself. And I'm not sure it's something we're going to get into. If anybody saw the speech from the Tongan captain after the game against the All Blacks, rugby needs to change because it's not fucking good enough. Simple as that. We'll obviously check in on all the news from in and around the game. Um, and anything else that maybe takes our fancy chatting about. And I think that's probably about it. Yeah, we'll be right here up until the end of the f- final test against South Africa when I predict the Lions will be taking the series 2-1. to one. Change my mind if you can. Anyway, let's just crack on with this episode. Hello, mate. How you doing? Hello, mate. I am... Uh, I'm pretty good, mate. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. I'm, I'm sat in my pants, sucking on the Merry Mint, looking forward to getting this podcast done. That's in your pants. Yeah, I don't know why what? I've done that. I've I've done it. I've been feeling really warm all day, so I'm literally sat in my pants with my shoes and my socks on, no shorts, no t-shirt. The dogs keep just looking at me as if to say, "What's going on?" Um, yeah, don't know. Just feeling really warm today. Be- a beautiful sight ingrained in my mind there, Gareth. Thank you very much. Just about to have my lunch as well. Oh, what have you got today? I don't know, actually, mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to. I'm on the road, so. Um... Gonna have to stop and buy something, but oh well, you haven't got a lunchbox then, have you? Not today, no, 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 no. I you had you... a what well, did you have? A ham and cheese toasty, was it? A ham and cheese toasty, yeah, it was divine. That was divine, yeah, divine. it was lovely. The dog had half of it though because he, he jumped up and took it out of my hand. <laughs> Anybody would think I don't feed him, but he's he's he, you know, he's well nourished, he doesn't go hungry, he's a good lad, but that, yeah, that annoyed me a little bit. I had words, survival of the fittest, mate. Absolutely, absolutely. It feels like I've not talked to you for a while, so sorry. I'm just like babbling along. I know, mate. I gutted last week, missed out last week, which is a, a particular shame because it was the last one of the season, wasn't it? But, uh, it absolutely or, or was. Season. It was, unfortunately, yeah. Um, and obviously I made the, the almighty error of saying that Jake Wall had been selected for the Lions, but it wasn't. It was um, Adam Beard. So, yeah. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I just, it's just, I'm a bit disappointed you brought that up actually, mate, because I was quite looking forward to bringing that up. <laughs> well, no, uh, to be fair, mate, that's exactly why I brought it up straight away because yeah, I just thought. Get, um, get it out there, right? Get it out there. Get it out there. Don't give you the opportunity to uh, rinse me on Jake it. Jake Ball, mate. Jake Ball. Well done. I know. Absolute shower of shit. Um, well, I, I wasn't just a, a name mention either. You, you carried on going on about it for quite, quite some time. It was. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. Little, little did you know, digging the hole at you again. Mate. mate, it wasn't even digging. It was full forklift, you know, JCB digger, just just burying myself in it. Um, so brutal, brutal, Bob, brutal Bob recovered it well, though. He did, did very well with his little yeah. He did. He did. I think he's getting more and more annoyed um, at my inability to actually have any real knowledge or understanding. Um, anyway, let's just... He must, just... he must know you well enough by now, surely. He does. Unfortunately, <laughs> poor bugger. Uh, but just before we kind of crack on with this week's episode, do you want to just go back and give your view of the final? Do you want to try and do you want to just kind of give your thoughts? I don't know why I said why you're going to try and do. You, oh, can't, can't. you can't change the outcome. <laughs> no, uh, I don't know really, mate. It's, uh, it seems like ages ago now, to be honest. But um, uh, for starters, but yeah, I think you 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 covered it. Pretty well, mate. It's, uh, was what it was, isn't it? I mean, it was just fan, a fantastic final, wasn't it? That's the yeah. the main thing. You couldn't have hoped for, uh, prob- you know, but a lot of people tagged it as the, the best premiership final ever. And I, I, I 
probably agree with that. I, d- I don't recall one being quite as. Uh, well, I would have thought any, any anyone involving Tigers would have come close. They've had some pretty good finals. <laughs> Route one China, Route one China. No, yeah. <laughs> no, but generally, you know, when you get to your semis and your finals, it it, it can get a little bit um. A little bit nervy, a little bit conservative, a little bit playing it safe sort of thing, isn't it? But um, yeah, just uh, oh, it's fantastic. It's just so. It's just that's that's my my big take from a lot of the rugby we've seen in the last part of this season, but also Quinn's massively leading leading the way. But just it's just brilliant rugby to watch, isn't it? It's so nice to see after you know a bit of a dip autumn. Autumn Nations Cup and stuff was some pretty dire stuff, wasn't it? And uh, just the, the game at the top level can be a little bit too much focused, in my view anyway, a bit too focused on defence and big power play and stuff, which is all well and good. It's all about winning at the end of the day. But, you know, we all, I think generally speaking, all the fans want to see some some running rugby and, and plenty of tries, isn't it? And we've certainly uh, been spoilt with that recently and especially the, the the semi-final and the finals just uh superb mate superb yeah, yeah. Was, massive congratulations to harlequins it's fantastic and obviously the harlequins women took the title this year as well yeah. so a, a proper good season for the quins overall really so called double there isn't it mm, absolutely um, so yeah they're um, just brilliant it's um they're just they're just on one of those runs aren't they where just everything's going their way and just on one of those almost unbeatable runs isn't it which uh um come they're, they're very few and far between they don't you know not, not many teams get them and not many teams get them uh, more than once or whatever but um no i think you would call it a, fair, it a, there, it? a fairy tale ending indeed yeah and it's so all on you know flip side to that very unlucky for extra chiefs and and they were very you know literally a uh, what you know one decision one one play of the game or whatever and then arguably the result could have some um and again i think i think it's all just my, my view overview is everything sort of went quinn's way which it does when you get on a good run you obviously not taking away anything from the you know the way they played and the quality of rugby and all that but um and vice versa there's quite a lot that went against chiefs these this season yeah um which i think you you sort of alluded to as well wasn't it obviously in the in the latter part um with losing some key guys to some sort of debatable decisions on length of bands and all the rest of it, wasn't it? But um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I, th- I think COVID. Personally, I think if if COVID wasn't here, if it was just a normal season, um, I, th- I think Chiefs probably would have seen it through, sort of thing. Um, but they yeah. they've been massively, massively affected, obviously, last season going on so late, and then they had literally like a two or three week break or something wasn't it before this season started and then covid's meant that uh, international guys are away for a lot lot longer you know it's pretty much just over half the fixture wise the season wasn't it so that that's impacted but um but you know again um you can't make excuses because they lost the game on the day isn't it and i know baxter and chiefs won't make excuses they and they didn't did they it's uh, no he was very um well, he was very Baxter, wasn't he? He was just really, uh, what's the word? Not unanimous in defeat. Humble in defeat. Humble. Humble. Um, yeah, really good. Really good showing by him. Um, okay. Yeah. Let, any Anything else you want to say? Or should we press on with the uh, rest of the kind of pod? No, I think uh, I think that's pretty much it. It was, uh, I, I, I just, my, my takeaway personal was um, massively pleased for, harlequins and, and and lovely to see some amazing rugby and sort of disappointment i think was uh feeling a bit sorry for extra chiefs because they just weren't quite it was it you could see that uh, similar to um i thought i thought what was better is that it was a, it was sort of a, a well contested game i think the, where they got knocked out of the heineken cup with the leinster game that was just they were just completely outplayed weren't they but this was a bit different um but where they weren't where they weren't just quite it was just just that extra you talk about percentages at this level isn't it? i think that would just compared to last season just a couple of percent off where they should have been isn't it and uh, yeah that's fair that uh, the key one for me was i think um that sort of camped back around about sort of 60 minutes ish wasn't it uh they were camped down on the uh quinn's 22 um 
and went for a, a penalty kick after a couple of penalty decisions um, to get to get only which would took them only five gave them only a five point lead. Yeah. Um, and it was at that point, I just thought, yeah, it's not that's not that's not Chiefs and that's not good. This is going to be uh, Quinns will come back from that. That will give them the tails up, and it did, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. They would if they'd gone gone for the corner and the line out and the push over, which they normally would do. Then uh, you'd be nine points clear, and I would argue whether Quinns would have come back from that. But anyway, it's all hearsay now, isn't it? But... Absolutely, mate. As I said at the start, it, uh, you ain't going to change the outcome. Um, so let's just let's just look at the news, uh, and obviously there's quite a lot of Lions news. But I just obviously want to start with the whole uh, old Bozza dropping the restrictions on the 19th of July. Um, and obviously fans are going to be allowed back in the stadiums and things like that. So that's good news, but also could be a bit worrying. With Obviously, we're not a COVID show. Um, but, you know, it's um, it's still about. And, and, and one kind of massive factor that's kind of come out so far in the last couple of days in terms of news, South Africa are isolating again. Yeah. Due to, due to positive tests within their camp. Yeah. Uh, second time in eight days after a positive corona test of the squad. So they were due to play Georgia on Friday, um, which I think that game has been cancelled now. And then, um, I, mean, I think they were, I heard they were um, delaying announcing the squad um, and confirming whether it's going ahead, but I haven't heard if it's actually. But you, okay. I mean, you would have thought oh, you, you, they're going to be struggling with the numbers of cases they've got, isn't it? To, well, yeah, it was actually like it, track and trace and all the rest of it, isn't it? Yeah, it was Lou, Lou Diego that tested positive. So, you know, that's uh, sorry, I just chewed that Murray Mint. If you heard that, it was it, it was bugging me. <laughs> it was bugging me, so I just cracked no, it. I think there's a few, isn't there? Now there's a few cases of some in the medical or sort of coaching backroom staff as well. Uh, isn't okay, well, the BBC is just reporting it was it, Lou Diego. Uh, I mean, I guess they, you know, they're isolating as a precaution, I guess. Um, but obviously, it's just yeah, yeah. You know, it's just typical, isn't it? You know, we get that opportunity to for the Lions to go ahead and, and fucking COVID just does what it does. Um, it, it is. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's already having an impact on the tour, isn't it? And uh, yeah. hopefully it doesn't uh, derail it too much. But obviously the main, as we all know, the main event is the, is the three tests, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, well, you know, if, if you have to lose everything else... <laughs> Not not good, but um, you know you, you don't want to be you don't want to be losing those three tests at the end at the end of the day, is it? That's what no, God no. And 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 just on that note, um, so next so Saturday's game for the Lions against the Vodacom Bulls has been postponed um, because they've got cases of COVID in their camp. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's the first game to be affected on the tour. Apparently, there's been a surge of infections in that area where the balls are obviously, you know, are. Um, but they're hoping to reschedule the game or find a different opponents for the Lions. But I'm not yeah. not sure how that's going to work. What what other opponents would there be? Like an invitational South African President's 15? But then I would have thought that would have you know, brought up even more kind of potential COVID outbreaks and, and risks. And I, I did hear that Steve Tandy was sort of saying that they could play Georgia, but I'm sure I heard or saw or read that Georgia themselves have a few. Um, yeah, I think they do following last week's fixture against South Africa. Yeah. Now, so, I think, yeah, I think it's, it's one of those, isn't it? I think um, pr probably what will happen certainly for South Africa is I, I don't think the fixture this week against Georgia will go ahead and then they'll probably just, I mean, they're in a bubble anyway, aren't they, as a squad? So yeah. it'll probably be a case of keep their heads down and, and you've got two, basically just over two weeks till the first test, isn't it? So, um, I mean, do you or, think, do you think this has a significant impact on their preparation for, for the Lions, for the test games? Cause at the moment I, I'm thinking in the Georgia game, I didn't see a great deal from South Africa and I appreciate it's the first time in, you know, nearly two years they've been together and they're obviously going to be rusty, but I didn't think they looked that great. Did, um, you, get, did you get a chance to watch it? I didn't actually, mate, in all honesty. I didn't get to okay. watch it. But the only thing I would say, uh, you know, that the way they're playing now and, and what they bring out in the tests is going to be 
um, T- totally different. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, um, and certainly, you know, even if you're like you say, haven't played for a while and a bit rusty and all that, that that might have a big impact for the the first test. So yeah. we definitely want to be gun, guns a blazing to making sure we pick up the W on that one. But um, no shadow of doubt, come second and third test, they'll be uh, they'll be pretty much back to hundred percent again, won't they? So. Uh, I, I, interesting. Yeah, that's that's the way I would read it, but um, yeah, it's it's going to cause disruption, whatever. I mean, imagine you're in they're in a bubble, so providing the guys are fit and healthy, they can they can train within their bubble, can't they? But um, yeah, I'd imagine they could have like inter team games, maybe. I don't know. They must yeah. have two, you know, over thirty players in the squad, so they could have, you know, an inter team knockabout, I guess, just to yeah, harden the, harden know, the bodies and sharpen the they? minds. I think they've got a huge bubble squad because it's to, to cover the South Africa A game as well, wasn't it? I think it's the... Ah, uh, okay. So that, I think that's why uh, he named such a big squad and there's quite, obviously quite a few of the uh, the Prem-based guys as well, wasn't it? But uh, Yeah, yeah. Some some uh, new and a bit unexpected, I guess, but um, well, not on form, but unexpected as in they haven't ever been included before. But yeah, so I, I, as far as I know, yeah, the, the squad is the, the self that's uh, self isolating that's bubbling is uh, is a big squad and it's to cover that uh, South Africa A game which is supposed to be happening about 10 days time yeah yeah I think so, you're right um, that, that's, uh, probably, okay. that's probably the target game for them isn't it to try and yeah test, for everyone test to out it. people yeah yeah okay so let's just let's just move away from the Lions news because obviously we'll come back to them when we talk about the game against uh, the Sigma Lions, um, which took place on the weekend. Just other news in the games. Harlequins have signed um, Hugh Jones, the Scotland centre from the Glasgow Warriors. Yeah. Um, so they're strengthening their squad, obviously, for next season. He's uh, signing. I don't know if there's yeah. anyone moving centre-wise for them. but Well, Ben tapai has gone, is it? Is it Tapai? Oh, he has, has he? Yeah, he's left, isn't he? Oh, okay, yeah, I was going to um, mention him, but um, I didn't know I didn't know he had left, but yeah, yeah. No, he's, okay. he's definitely so, gone. So Hugh Jones, Esther Hazen, Marchant, uh, Marchant. Marchant. Yeah, they're left the centres now, aren't they? Yeah, North, is it Northmore? He's a centre or yeah. wing, isn't yeah, he? Yeah. And so they've signed quite... Jack Walker as well now. Did you hear that one? Yeah, the bath hooker. Yeah. Yeah, is it you? Was it, is he's... he a decent player or I'm not? Well, um, yeah, yeah, he is. I think... Um, I don't think he's fulfilled his potential yet. Is probably the what what I would say is the sort of uh, um, sort of politest way to describe. He, he's, I think I think he is a good player, but I think his the potential he's got is is uh, he, he could be a really good player. Um, so uh, he he hasn't managed to do, unfortunately do that with Bath. So um, and where was he before? I've gone blank now. Where he was before, but. Uh, I think before he signed for Bath, he was, um, you know, uh, one of those who was touted as the next big thing hooker-wise. He was England under twenty, and I think he captained the England under twenties as well. Um, but yeah, just uh, although he's played well for Bath and uh, uh, been a good squad member, he hasn't uh, um, reached that potential that uh, that was sort of touted for him. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, hopefully he can do it with Quinns. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Rory Jennings has signed for London Irish. He's um, coming over from Claremont Auvergne. Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, I guess that's because obviously they've lost um, Theo Bofi Cruz and old, um, oh, what's the Irish fly half? He played quite a lot of games last season. So I'm assuming they're bringing this guy in as cover. What's the Irish guy called? Paddy Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Has he left them, hasn't he? No, he's not left. I just saying he he played quite oh, okay. a lot of games, didn't he? Yeah, he played probably all of them, didn't he? Probably, yeah, I was going to say I, I, I don't ever remember him not being at fly half. So, <laughs> so that's some interesting news coming out of London Irish. Uh, controversial news, interesting news. Not one hundred percent sure how to take this one. Old um, Izzy Falau is uh, he's yeah. returning to, to returning to rugby union. Um, over in Japan, uh, la, 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 Japanese top side NTT Communications. Mm. Uh, I just, I don't know. I don't even want to talk about him. To be fair, 
Um, let's, let's just leave it there. Moving on to the internationals. So, ah, there is something I wanted to talk about. Tonga's game against New Zealand. So New Zealand put 102 points past Tonga. Um, yeah. And, and it, really, it really annoyed me. I think something has to change. Test rugby needs more kind of depth of competitive nations. There's got to be more kind of done to kind of level up the game. Um, I think there's the, the change. There needs to be a change in the eligibility of players to who, to, for, for which country they play for. So, like like people have been saying, Charles Peterow got a few te- cap, test caps from New Zealand. He should be allowed to go back and play for Tonga. That that result of 102 nil doesn't do fucking Tonga any favors. It doesn't really show New Zealand anything. Um, and I don't know if you saw the Tongan captain after the game talking about, I mean, they were literally ringing people up because of the whole, obviously, having to isolate and things like that to get people to play. It was just, it's just horrible. Nobody, yeah, it like, doesn't do anybody any good, does it? And things no, need, need to change. It was a double, um, double-edged sword, this one, wasn't it? If I, I think, like you said about isolating, I think that was a key factor in it as well. They, they obviously... It would have been a, probably a big score anyway, but um, they weren't even able to contest in any way because no. not, all of their main top key players, as in European base and stuff, weren't able to play, were they? Because they were all quarantining from travelling over there and stuff, weren't they? So the way I understood it, so that yeah, like you say, they were literally phoning around all the from local uh, New Zealand clubs and whatever, trying to find any Tongan eligible players to come and join the squad, wasn't it? Which is yeah, shocking. You know, I, I think and that for that reason, maybe that fixture probably should have been cancelled or postponed. But um I mean realistically you could see a New Zealand A team putting fifty points potentially past that Tongan side. Yeah. But then a, f- a fully loaded Tongan side um but didn't but didn't they in the World Cup warm up? Didn't the fully New Zealand side put like seventy points past the full Tonga team? I, I, I remember. can't remember that to be honest. Yeah, I mean, they, they, I think Tong, Tonga um, are probably um, have sort of declined a bit in strength. Yeah. <clears throat> but no, yeah, I, going going back to the overall, I I totally agree. Some you know, World Rugby I needs to do something on the eligibility uh, rules, and yeah, something a lot of people have said that what you just mentioned. I, I think that's a very good idea. Wherever you pitch that number of caps, whether it's one, two, three, four, five, whatever, but um, uh, I, I would is, say yeah. like eight. If you've played eight times for another country, that's the cutoff point because you're getting to be more of an established player. You could be on like you could get your eight caps. How eight? Inju- why, why eight? I don't know. I just I just <laughs> think eight, and then you could like get your eight caps, have an injury, and then that's it. You're done. You're not. You're not because things move on. People get better, you know, they develop, and then you, then that's it. So eight would be... Yeah, and all, all just change of um, coach, manager, or whatever, isn't it? Exactly. You know, and, and if you're at, you know, for example, let's say Charles Pieta was playing for New Zealand, got five or six caps, and then there was a change of management, and... He doesn't uh, fit. Yeah, he fall out of favour, and he's maybe at the age of sort of around the 30 mark, so there's still some rugby in him, but he's not going to play for New Zealand, then, yeah, Tonga would love to get two, three, four years out of him as an international for them, wouldn't they? But uh, And he'd probably want that as well. Yeah, I don't I, I don't know, mate. I, I would have thought I, you would have thought most of the players will want to play for their, if they get the opportunity to play for their absolutely. sort of nation of heritage or whatever, isn't it? But, mm. um, let's move on. Ireland, we're Japan. We're trucking slightly here, mate. Right? No, well, uh, I did say in the introduction, this is a, a lion special podcast with other shit as well. So <laughs> it's okay. I don't think I swore though. Just it's, good. It's, a good, it's a good topic. It's obviously yeah, it's... yeah, absolutely. Um, so then the next international, uh, Japan. Ooh, Ireland 39, Japan 31. Japan were totally in this game, mate. It was a really good game. I really enjoyed watching it. They, they came on a lot better since they played the Lions in that um, training game up in up in Scotland. Um, and they really, really pushed Ireland, scoring four tries. Um, I appreciate the fact, obviously, there's a lot of Irish first-choice internationals that weren't playing, but you still had Van der Fleer, Doris, Mahoney on the back row. Um, Carberry was at 10, Gibson Park at 9, Stockdale on one wing, McCluskey in the centre. Lama on the other one. It was still a pretty decent Irish team. 
Um, and yeah, Japan really pushed them. They played really well, really good. Really enjoyed watching that game. Yeah, I I, I wasn't able to watch that one live. I caught uh, sort of highlights and stuff, man. That's uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, but Japan, a, Japan, a Japan useful quality team, right? mate. Yeah, and then are they going going back to what was you know talking about tier two side? The difference between them and you know maybe your Tongas and is is pr- probably um, scraping it all back is, is just money, isn't it? They they've yeah. got a lot of money in their in their country in their league, their rugby, um, to inject in in resources and coaches and the rest of it, isn't it? So they, they, they're they a, a tier two side who have hugely improved over the last... Yeah, and, and, and just to make that point, sorry, mate, to interrupt, but also, obviously, there's the whole potential corruption within the kind of, you know, Pacific Islanders, island nations, like Dan Leo is obviously highlighting and... Yeah. You know, I don't imagine there's that kind of corruption in 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 the kind of Japanese infrastructure. So yeah, there's there's those contributing factors as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, mate, definitely. It's uh, um, but yeah, J- Japan. Um, I, I really enjoy watching Japan play. Actually, I do. I, I, lo- I love the style of rugby they play. I, I think probably in this game and and uh, and when they come up against. The uh, the sort of top tier one sides generally is it's probably just literally size and, and weight and physicality that 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 um, often makes makes the big difference. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm not saying they're not a physical side. They they're like 110 percent physical side, aren't they? They they but physically um, man for man and you know scrum pack weight and all the rest of it. They uh, um they're not as big as you know um well ireland england south africa are they so um no I, yeah I, I, I understand where you're from. That, that, that takes a toll on on bodies and fitness and all the rest of it doesn't it so uh, yeah um but yeah I just, I just yeah i love i love i love i love i love what their style of play mate i think uh, yeah they're cracking be the best attacking play um nation out there they're just it's just fantastic rugby yeah really good to watch um and then wales dismissed canada or canada canada relatively easy 68 yeah. 12 clearly first half was was massive for the welsh side they put 40 points on uh canada um and obviously well you can't really say canada got better in the second half because they still put 28 points past them so Obviously, the only issue coming out of that game was Lee Halfpenny had quite a significant injury. Um, oh, which had uh, 100th cap as well, wasn't it? Yeah, 100th cap. And he's, I think he's done his ACL. Yeah, that's, I think it's. I think it's so, ACL. yeah, he's, he's going to be out for a while. Um, Argentina scraped by Romania. Yeah. 24 yeah. 17. And. I, I was I did, obviously didn't get to see this game, but I was looking at the Argentinian time at uh, time team, and you know it was pretty pretty decent. Imoff, Moroni, obviously the Leicester centre, Cordero were playing, um, Montoya, the the captain and hooker um, again from Leicester, Matera. It was a Lavanini. It was a pretty decent Argentinian side. Yeah, uh, I'm not even going to go try and pronounce the remaining guys, but yeah, tw- <laughs> 24 17 victory. Yeah, fair I'm, play to Romania. You know, that's that's didn't see that one coming. Um, but I guess obviously, again, it's, it just depends on you know conditions and COVID and restrictions and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, but but still aren't as strong as arguably they were a few no. years back, are they? they they've sort of they, they've put they pulled out some big results, haven't they? But not consistent, so uh, no. Haven't played for quite a while, like a lot of teams, but um, yeah, just it, but still, with all of that, um, you'd expect them to go a little bit better. Win fairly comfortably against Romania, yeah, yeah. Um, and then obviously England's game against the United States. Um, yeah. Really good first half from England. I think we dropped off in the second half. Obviously, Eddie went with a six-two split on the um, on the bench, so. Yeah. Six forwards and two backs. I think it back. I do. I do, genuinely do think it backfired a little bit for him because there were some injuries. I genuinely, genuinely think he might have regretted that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but how, how did you think the England performance was? I, I don't think he's going to be overly happy with letting in four tries. Forty-three twenty-nine overall at the uh, end of the game. The States obviously it. had the better I second loved half. It. I loved it. You loved it. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, mate. No, I didn't interrupt you. Carry on. Carry on. No. What did you love? 
the, the England performance. Oh, okay. Overall, overall, it was pretty decent. I thought Cock and the singer played quite well. Um, Stewart at fullback played quite well. Obviously, Malins has gone off and he's now withdrawn from the England camp because he's got shoulder injury. So that's sad news. I thought all the Leicester boys stand about pretty well. Um, oh, yeah, there's quite a few of them. Oh, all right, and the Bath guys did okay as well. <laughs> Not as many as Bath, obviously, but you know. uh, one. Genshin Stewart. Two, two, three, three. Anyway, it's not, they all, it's not they bad. They really well. Um, do you want to do you want to give an overview of the game or? Yeah, no, you, I, you loved I, it. I, no, genuinely, mate. I, I, um, I loved it. Like, um, the just the, the it's just great to see England actually <laughs> playing some rugby, like. <laughs> Playing what's in front of them and and that you know everything like that. I, I thought Randall was was superb, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, Harry Randall. Yeah, I, thought he, I thought he linked up really well with Smith as well. I thought Smith actually had quite a quiet game. I don't think he kind of. Obviously, we see him for Harlequins playing that heads up rugby, and I wondered if he just dialed that back a little bit because of fear from the gaffer, Mister Jones, and what he might think. But you know, the tries they scored were really good. I thought. Yeah, I d- I wouldn't say. I know what you're saying. Like, um, I, I thought Marcus Smith had a good game, um, but yeah, he, he didn't do any particular standout individual brilliant moments like he like he has been doing for for Harlequins. But um, that, that, that's it's it's kind of natural. A, a it's international rugby, and B he's playing with he's not playing with his week in week out, week out club mates who um, he knows like the back of his hand sort of thing, isn't it? So yeah. Danny Kerr and, and Joe Marchin and the rest of it. So um, a bit more relaxed than at ease to do all that, isn't it? So it's it's always going to be like that a bit, I suppose. But I, I but flip side to that is Harry Randall played pretty much exactly how he <laughs> has been for Bristol, isn't it? And I just yeah, it's such a, that guy's got balls, isn't he? He's got some serious balls for. Well, he's, he's not very, the biggest, is he? He's he's not, probably, no, he's not. He's probably about your size, isn't he? I don't know. I think I might be bigger than him, mate. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, quite... but. Um, He's uh, just, it's just brilliant, mate. It's just lovely to see a, um, yeah, a, a guy of his stature physically just, just playing yeah, so amazingly well at that. Point. I like, I, I like the fact that he was willing just to tap and go. Obviously, he scored a try from it as well, didn't he? So, yeah, hats off. I think it was, I'd be interested. Physically, defensively, he, he knocked back. I think it was there, <coughs> the flankers off the back of a liner. He, he put him backwards, mate. It was, uh, so it's one of those, isn't it? Like, you look at these guys and they sometimes look small, but, it, there's, there's no player that plays at that level who isn't strong and physical, is it? At the end of the day, yeah, so absolutely, of course not. But, um, yeah, no, I agree, mate. I, I it, yeah, it's not you know, uh, you, you could pick fault with it, but at the end of the day, it's uh, it was all you know, it was it was a new group of players, um, a lot of youth, and I think was it twelve new caps? Yeah, twelve new caps. Um, so. You know, taking all that into account, I thought they did very well, and also dealing with the disruption that was encountered during the game through the uh, injuries, Malins, like you said, and, and then Ollie, um, Ollie Lawrence, wasn't it? Ollie Lawrence, wasn't it? Yeah, um, and it not not just having those two injuries, but not actually having the unfortunately having the bench to uh, to properly cover it as well, wasn't it? So you had. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the majority of the game, you had two two guys off your bench basically playing out of position, wasn't it? So uh, yeah, Umunga in the centre and Dan Robson on the uh, on the wing, wasn't it? So, that is all, yeah, so that's always going to equate to struggling, specific, in particular defensively, and, and potentially letting in a few tries, isn't it? So, uh, um, which is what what happened? What happened? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, cool. Happy. Overall, overall liked it, mate. I liked Over, it. Overall, he loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, interesting result today. I don't know if you're aware. Uh, Australia have played France over in Australia. Australia came out on top 23-21. They actually came from behind to win. They were 15-7 down at half time. Um, can't obviously comment on the game, so I've not seen it. But, yeah, interesting Interesting result. I wonder if uh, old um, KLTA will be happy with that one. Probably not, but... What, so down not... in Australia, though? Down Is in it... Australia, mate, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it... I don't actually know. Are they doing a two or three test? I think it's a three test tour. I could be wrong. I don't think there's many 
kind of, you know, full on main kind of um, French team, you know, first team. I mean, obviously, uh, what's the scrum half called? No, I, I did. I did see the the starting lineups. I, I, they, yeah, they weren't what you would say full strength France. That's for sure. No, and just looking at the Australian team, the only one I recognise there is Hooper. And so, Tamir, Matt Tamir is playing, wasn't he? No. Yes. Centre, wasn't he? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, he was. You're right. You are right on that one. Anyway, let's talk Lions because this is supposed to be a Lions special with other shit. Um, what did you think of the game then, mate, against the Sigma Lions? Um, well, overall good, mate. I think uh, it's uh, can't can't take that much away from it. The, the opposition obviously were were weak, but you, you don't expect anything different, really. Especially first first game of the tour, isn't it? Gen- generally, as it goes, the opposition sort of gradually gets tougher and tougher. But I don't think. Uh, I don't think the the Lions are going to have anyone that's potential, that's really going to challenge them until we get to the tests on this tour. Yeah. Um, but te- you know, taking all that into account, I, yeah, I, I thought the 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 they looked good. They they had you know a good structure. You could see the good direction, and they and they played their game regardless of the level of the opposition. Yeah. But they they played their game, and, and it looked, overall, I thought it looked pretty positive, and most players. Um, did a good account for themselves, I would say. Yeah. I, 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 do you know what I think? And I know I picked him in my squad. Chris Harris, the Gloucester and Scotland centre, yeah. set that set that try up for Reece Samet. I thought he was fantastic in defence. Yeah. Just overall, I think he really put his hand up for kind of test selection, especially now. Um, I think he's got a hamstring injury. What's he called? Hen- Henderson. 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 The centre. Not Henderson. Uh, you know who I mean, don't you? I can't think of his freaking name. Jeez, oh, played with Bundiaki in the first game against Henshaw. Robbie Henshaw. Why am I saying Henderson? You're thinking in the second row, I think. Yeah, he's captain for the next game, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think... Let's just move on quickly because we just sound like we don't know what we're talking about. Anyway, I thought I'm Watson... really, for, I'm really, I'll just say I'm really looking forward to Jake Ball's uh, debut. <laughs> yeah, I'm with as well, mate. <laughs> He's going to be excellent. I think he is playing um, tonight. <laughs> uh, I thought Watson played really good, as in Hamish Watson, not Anthony. Uh, did, and I thought did, Josh did. Adams, I think Watson, Adams and Chris Harris all put their hands up for test selection. Adams, I thought he took over. I know he you know, there was a couple of tries where he had nobody in front of him and it was just a run in. But I think, you know, he just played really well. He's got that real kind of really good in attack, good in defence, good under the high ball. And I think, I think test selection is wide open, mate. I don't think Gatlind, maybe bar like one or two, knows what his test team's going to be. I think Courtney Law's played really good. I'm not sure how the Finn Russell Owen Farrell access works. If I'm honest, there was a couple of times where Owen's overrun. Um, I think the inside ball from um, Russell was an outside ball. Maybe I'm not sure. They just yeah. didn't. They didn't quite look like they gelled that well. So I don't know. But I mean, for me, Dan Bigger would be the number ten anyway. Um, I think yeah. At the moment, he is. He's almost certainly. I would say it is number one. Uh, choice ten, isn't he? I, 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 yeah, the 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 Russell Farrell thing uh, potentially could could be very uh, yeah work very well, could be very useful. But yeah, it's oh, it's first time they played together at f- yeah. first four, isn't it? and Farrell's still not. Um, He's not back, firing, is he? No, but um, <laughs> so if if they can have a few more games together and Farrell can get back to his best, which I have no doubt he probably will on this tour, but um, then. Yeah, then it could be an option, um, but yeah, I, I think I agree. At the moment, it's uh, it's bigger, isn't it, for number ten? Um, mm. Yeah, Harris is uh, if he can keep that momentum going, he'll certainly be challenging for a spot, won't he? And actually, uh, to be fair to him, uh, Elliot Daly, I thought he had. Oh, yes, yeah, I forgot Elliot Daly. Yeah, he he was fantastic he's when he came on. Bob won't like us saying this, but <laughs> he won't like us at all because he thinks he's a what? <laughs> <laughs> but but um, yeah. I agree. I thought Daly played really well. So yeah, but shock, 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 shock. He's playing in the in position, the that, position. Yeah, yeah which, uh, ridiculous. 
fucking ridiculous, Eddie. Eddie, fucking hell, Eddie. Um, I tell you what, I tell you what as well. I don't know, and, and this is not me having a go because it's a bar player. I don't think Fanatown's playing that great. Uh, no, he played better this game than against Japan. Yeah. I thought, but, um, yeah, but it's all about these tours. Are all about momentum, isn't it? It's about um, yeah. the guy you know, building your sort of form, and uh, as you go along, because uh, like you say. Uh, Gatlin may well have a sort of an idea of a test side in his mind at the beginning of the tour, but it's up to players to change his mind. Change his mind at the end of the day, isn't it? Play the way in. Like Josh Adams, arguably, might not have been a starter, a test starter at the beginning, but um, no, he's probably number one um, choice winger at the moment. Um, pro- probably closely followed by and and. Uh, then Reese Samet and um, Liam Williams behind. I think Liam Williams has possibly got a bit of form to gain up, hasn't he? To, uh, um, but if if they're all top and on fire and on form, you'd you'd probably be, be looking at uh, see, I'm dis- Williams, Watson, and Hogg as the back three, isn't it? But, uh, no, see, I'm going to disagree. Well, that's, isn't that what we pick for our? <laughs> I don't know, but I might, yeah, but you know, people have played games now. I think I would have Adams, Williams, and Anthony Watson at fullback. So I'm, I'm saying, uh, start of the tour before anyone's played a game. Yes. If, yeah. If you're, if you're picking your test side like we did, everyone's on their best form, sort of thing. Okay. Fair enough. Then you'd probably go um, Williams, Watson, and Hogg. Okay. I, I, I think Hogg's still shooing for for fullback. Personally, he's he's um, oh. he's not um, necessarily, at his, but he's his his. Uh, his best is better than the rest, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh. Okay. How the tackle he did was unbelievable. <laughs> did you see that one? I can't, I can't remember who, that was, who he chased down on that. But. Oh, yeah, no, that, yeah, that, that big um, flanker. Was he a flanker? Was he a centre or a winger? Yeah, no, I know the one he you mean. either a centre or a back row. I can't he's literally, he's, he's chased him down, jumped back up, got over the top of him and, and turned the ball over. Yeah, that, that yeah. Be... Pens, he was like coasting... Because he was he was making ground on the guy, and then just when when he got about sort of ten yards away, he just just put on this ex went another gear with his pace and just poof. yeah, unreal, mate, unreal. But um, yeah, but anyway, uh, so just just to but, confirm, it was literally sorry. Just to go back to the news, it's literally as we're sat here chatting, literally, uh, the BBC reporting that the game is cancelled between South Africa and Georgia. Yeah, okay. We well, thought that was probably the case, didn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, let's, let's just look look forward to tonight's game. Obviously, British and Irish Lions are taking on the... They're not Natal Sharks anymore, are they? They're some weird name Sharks. Well, it's Natal Base, isn't it? Really? It's Natal Base. But... Yeah, so who the... Hang on a second. Who the frick are they playing? Oh, it just says the Sharks on the BBC. Come on, the BBC, you're letting us down. How do you think the game's going to go tonight, mate? Six it's o'clock. Vodafone, o'clock. Isn't it? Say again? It's Vodafone, the Sharks, isn't it? Vodafone Sharks, yeah, I think you're right. How do you think this one's going to go, mate? Sharks are probably a better team than the uh, Sigma... Is it Sigma? Sigma Lions. Yeah. Sigma. Well, I think uh, it'll probably be... I still think it'll, it'll be quite a comfortable line. I think the the sad thing with this tour is all the uh, anyone in that South African slash South African A bubble squad can't play for their respective uh, yeah uh, club or uh, sides, can they? So um, no. Whereas sort of a normal Lions tour, you you would have some of your international guys featuring against the Lions before they actually get to the test, isn't it? But um, yeah, yeah, you we, would weakens uh, some of the the pre-test fixtures but um yeah no i i still think yeah i, yeah, I agree they're, they're a, a stronger side than than last week but um still should be a comfortable win for the lions and it'd be good to see some of the guys who are playing get a decent run out as well sam simmons and tom curry yeah that's what i'm sorry I'm, I'm literally just trying to find the team what the team is but the back row i think is going to be and apparently they've been just given the right to go out and play what they want so you got, yeah, got Curry, Simmons, and Navidi. Navidi on the back row. I mean, Second all row is Ian Henderson, captain, and Jake Ball's getting his first game. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. 
Uh, Adam Beard. You mean Adam Beard for those people who don't don't get the joke. (laughs) Mako, Mako, Karen, Dickey and Fagerson, I think, as front row, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Doing very well, mate. Well done. Gareth Davies, Dan Bigger, Bundyaki and Daly. Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting combo. Yeah, that could be good to see. Bit of creativity there from Daly, hopefully. And uh, back free Vandermeer, Watson and Williams. Strong team. Yeah, it is like it's what it, um, I can't remember who, who it was. I saw a post um, last week. Was it Jim Hamilton? Probably. He's quite funny. No, it wasn't a funny post. It was a, Ooh, um, a serious one. It was, it, was when, it was when the first Lions uh, team was announced. Uh, but, uh, anyway, cut a long story short, whoever it was basically said, it's not until you see the, the starting 15 or squad down on paper that you realise just what the strength of that Lions squad is, isn't it? And it's, uh, yeah. it's true. Whatever whatever 15 or 23 they uh, they field, it's... Uh, you just look at the names; it's, it's unreal, isn't it? And you, uh, it seems like a stupid sort of thing to say. Like you, you know, obviously the quality's there, but that's the point, isn't it? Until you see that down on paper, it's just uh, it's what it's all about, isn't it? British Lions, the best of the best, arguably. Well, it's Warren Gatlin's best. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, the I'm, idea I'm just, is the best I'm of the just, best. Yeah, I'm pulling your plonker. Well, no, at the end of the day, that's the same as any side, isn't it? It's yeah, one of course. Man. No, I'm joking, mate. Strong bench as well. Ken Owens on the bench. Sutherland's on the bench. Furlong, uh, Tagburn, Jack Conan, Connor Murray, Stuart Hogg, Chris Harris. So, yeah, strong bench. I can I can see this being quite a good, solid victory again, like it was against the uh, Stigma Lions. Yeah, the uh, I think you uh, mentioned that last week because that was... a. Uh, Obviously, poor old Alan Wynne Jones mm. um, going out, but, but rumor has it he is targeting coming back for some. Never, never, never going to happen. Well, you never know. You never I don't know. think if he's he, Swan Song. Then he might be just thinking, "F the body, I'm gonna." <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, um, anyway, yeah. uh, if that happens, that happens. But current, you know, flip side is that is the, the Connor Murray decision, wasn't it? Which uh, mm. I think, like most, I, I was a bit shocked with that but actually trying to you know having time to sort of think about it it's uh the reason why gatlin's done it. obviously he's a he's a leader and, and um although he's i don't think he's ever captained i don't think he's captained ireland if not has he who Conor murray no he hasn't not even monster no but he but he is a leader he's obviously yeah, he's got experience this is someone who's not third, he, you know, within the group tour. yeah ireland but then, obviously, I, yeah the other, the other thing I was trying to I was trying to sort of analyze why Gatlin's and if you think of the sort of who might be the sort of senior group of leaders within that squad now when Jones is not Alan when Jones is not there um is is he thinking Connor Murray for his position is my only definite test starter at the moment yeah um but I, I reckon that must be coming into the thinking he you know he's just thinking that he is my number nine um, whereas you know Stuart Hogg is a is a obviously a, a leader in the group, isn't he? But not not necessarily nailed on the fifteen spot. Obviously uh, Farrell is a big leader, but he's certainly got a long way to go to probably get a definite test spot. Um, and maybe even the likes of Itoji, isn't it? But um, so yeah, I, I reckon. Sorry, I'm sidetracking a bit here, mate. But it's still live. No, it's fine. Lions- <laughs> no, it's fine. Absolutely fine. Yeah, I reckon that must have come into Gatlin's thinking, don't you? I would, yeah, I would have thought so. I think we know that um, Owen Farrell was voted into that leadership group, wasn't he, by his peers within the squad? So you're probably right. He's but Owen Farrell's not in good on top form. Who else is there? Yeah, you're probably right. Connor, Connor, Connor Murray. I was going to say Connor McGregor. Then Jesus, imagine <laughs> having a mix scrum off. Um, you know, he's 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 going to dictate the way the game goes. He's going to, you know, he's the link between the forwards and the backs. So. Yeah, I, I think initially I kind of thought, mm, not so sure. But now, obviously, hindsight and reflecting is a, is a wonderful thing. And I think, yeah, he's probably, the, he was or is the best the best choice um, to go on and captain the Lions now. Alan wins is obviously gone. Yeah. He ain't coming back. If I was to say, if Alan Wynne-Jones comes back and I was one of the second rows that played all tour, 
and he comes back in, I'd probably throw my teddy bear out of the pram and say, fuck it, I'm off. <laughs> you would, well, you would. That's just you though, isn't it, Gareth? Well, yeah, but I think, I think, I think most of them probably, well, maybe they wouldn't say fuck it and throw their teddy bear out of the pram, but I think they'd be pretty, pretty frustrated, should we say. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, mate. Don't know. It's, well, the Lions no, are not really, not, not, they're all competitive and competing for places, but the Lions is, uh, is a bit more than that, isn't it? It's, uh, you, you and he, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, he was the standout leader, wasn't he? Yeah, well, so it's, look a bit, it. it's a bit different, I think, if he comes back, but. Oh, I don't know, yeah. mate. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Anyway, I, I was I was a bit surprised with his replacement actually, <laughs> Jake Ball, uh, Adam Beard. Like obviously, <laughs> was obviously a, <laughs> Adam Beard. Yeah, he's a great he's a great player. Not not no disrespect to him. Um, but you know, you throw in the other second row names who were you know, I, yeah, I, to, be honest, to be honest, when everyone was sort of doing their selecting their squad. Uh, before Gatlin did, I, I don't. I didn't hear of anyone mentioning Adam. Did nobody Adam mentioned did, him, mate. But, nobody. But you got you know Johnny Gray and. Uh, I, I said if you listened to last week's podcast, which I obviously you would have done. Yeah. You know, uh, I said Sam Skinner. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think I'd have taken Sam Skinner over Johnny Gray because I think he's just been. He just wise, adds. Yeah. Or who? Sorry. Form wise, he's uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he's he's been he's been fantastic, well. absolutely fantastic. So, what are we yeah, doing? I think I don't know. Yeah, but G- Gatlin sometimes does that, doesn't he? It's uh, almost default because he knows the Welsh guys better, doesn't he? Um, yeah, true. Uh, so he's gone for two two Welsh replacements for Tipperick and Alan Wynne Jones. Um, and uh, I suppose Adam Beard is quite um, f- sort of style of second row. He's similar to Win Alan Wynne Jones, isn't he? With uh, he he gives the same sort of size. In the second row, yeah, bulk guys. Do you know what I mean? Whereas yeah, Johnny yeah. Gray might lose a bit there, and, and potentially Skinner as well, isn't it? Not I don't know. Quite... Sam, Sam Skinner's a bit of a unit, isn't he? Yeah, well, they're, they're all big, aren't they? But oh, um, they're all big compared he's, to us. He's a bit more of a mobile second row than a a, a workhorse one, isn't he? I would say. But hmm. anyway, okay. Um, do you want to just do international predictions quickly? Uh, yeah. New Zealand, Fiji. New Zealand. Did you say Fiji? Yeah, New Zealand. <laughs> All right. Uh, Wales, Argentina. Wales. Yeah, I've, hopefully Argentina will um, pull out a better performance. So it'll be a good contest. But yeah, Wales should be winning that one, shouldn't they? Yeah. Uh, Romania and Scotland looks like it's cancelled. It's got C's through the name. Ireland yeah. and the United States. Uh, Ireland. Yep. But I'd like to see USA pull out another, yes, or yes. a more improved performance again. And then England and Canada. Uh, England. England. Wales put sixty-two points past Canada, so I'd be very disappointed if we didn't get sort of similar, if not more. Yeah, team team not announced for that one yet, is it? Not that I've seen. No, no. All right, mate. We'll Steve, um. Don Brandt coming in there, wouldn't it? Say that again. Good to see Don Brandt giving a go. Yeah, Don Brandt needs to play. So does um, the other Harlequins, Frank. Uh, can't think of his name either. Jesus. Begins with a K. Kennington. Yes, him. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know though, because he got captain's back row, hasn't he? If he's Who? captain again. Who? Sam's. Ludlow. Oh, Ludlow, yeah. Twat. Yeah, of course. Yeah, he. I thought he played quite well as well. To be fair. Yeah, I um, thought, and also, um, always get the names mixed up. But Lud, Ludlum, Ludlum. Yeah, played very played. well coming off the bench, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. We got so many good back rows, mate. Imagine having that choice. Yeah, I mean, I you could probably rest Sam Underhill because he he was just outstanding, wasn't he? Um, I I thought he had a fantastic game against USA, but uh, yeah, he, he, he stood out as one of the senior guys. I thought. Um, but um, do you need to play him against Canada? Pro- probably not. Um, don't know. Well, it's what shame, isn't it? It, you, you, what's the what's the point? You might you've got all these players. You can blood new players. You can test new players. You can make sure they got a cap so they don't go anywhere else. <laughs> Jobs are good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> all right, mate. Listen, we've been chatting for nearly an hour now, so I will let you go on 
go and get your lunch. I suggest some sushi, nice and healthy. Sushi, man. That's sushi. Yeah. Um, and we'll we'll catch up again next week with more interesting ruggers from South Africa, internationals, and general news. Um, e, you know. See you next hey. week. Hello. Hello. I said hopefully COVID pisses off and stops interfering with the rugby as it has done for so long. Yeah, I don't mind what else it interferes with. The one that doesn't interfere much more with the rugby. <laughs> All right, mate. Okay. Know, yeah, good, good stuff. It's been a good one. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully we get some more listeners um, and we'll, yeah, we'll see you again next week. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Bye for now. Bye. Cheers. There we go. That was the first episode in our Lions Tour specials over the summer. Thank you, as ever, for taking time to listen, to download, liking us, following us on Instagram and Twitter. We are obviously available on all major platforms such as YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify and Anchor. And yes, as I mentioned, we are over on uh Twitter at top two inches RP. Interestingly enough, uh, Ollie with his eagle eye noticed that we have had our Instagram account copied or hacked, um, but we have reported that to the official gods at Instagram and they are currently investigating the dirty little bastards that decided to copy us. Obviously, they know that we're getting quite a lot of uh, social media traction, I guess, and becoming quite popular, uh, I wish. But uh, yeah, don't go out and copy our stuff, mate. We are an original podcast uh, and watch your backs. We're coming for you. Anyway, we'll be back next week for uh, episode two. Catch you then.